Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my presentation will be divided in two parts, one regarding the rolling stock, and to be more precise about the shunting activities, and the second one will be about uh, infrastructure, and uh, as well to be more precise about the rail maintenance. So let's start with the shunting activities, so the rolling stock. When we need to assess the efficiency of a railway between A and B, it is not only important to know what will be the speed between A and B, it is important also to optimize the process in E and B. So it's a question of efficiency in terminal E and B. And all the target and the targets of all uh, operators and uh, industry is to optimize these activities, which include usually the assembly, the disassembly of the train, but also the distribution of freight cars at the terminal. And this is what we call shunting uh, activities. Uh, these activities uh, are performed in uh, marshalling, yard, marshalling yard or shunting yards. And to give you the importance of uh, these activities, for instance, uh, from uh, Belle Marshalling Yard, which is the largest uh, marshalling yard in the world, in US, we, they are used to say that this is the economic barometer of America. So, um, wrong button. How it works? So first, we have a complete trains uh, coming to the marshalling yards with uh, mainline locomotives. And you can see that all the wagons are mixed, uh, might be mixed together. Then uh, we operate with the shunting locomotives. They are char in charge to uh, make the disassembly and the reassembly of the proper train. And they would uh, travel along the track with the, the new um, rearrangement going to different kind of uh, terminal that might be oil terminal we saw now we see uh, automotive uh, automobile terminal but also other terminal so let's discuss about what you saw the shunters so uh, these uh, shunters which are used to move uh, freight and uh, passenger cars uh, are really subject to different operating conditions than the mainline locomotives. This uh, work cannot be done by mainline locomotives because uh, when we look in the details at the operating condition, we can see they are subject to a highly uh, irregular load cycle. For instance, they are idle, then they work uh, with uh, full uh, power and they come back to uh, idle situation. They have to operate as well is in very narrow space, so uh, the bogies have to be able to uh, turn on, on sharp radius, and uh, they are subject also to harsh environment. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, steel industries, for instance, where you have a lot of uh, dust, but it can be also the environment, the general environment uh, of in, in, in Saudi, in UAE, wherever, with a lot of sand and, and dust. So, to, what, what are the main requirements for these uh, shunters? In fact, you need to see in both uh, directions. So, you need what we call a mid cab, okay, for um, a good visibility. Uh, you need a high attractive uh, effort to move uh, the, all the rolling stock very quickly. And you need, as well, a rugged body uh, because this, uh, these shunters are subject to very frequent uh, contact, as you can imagine, with uh, other uh, locomotives or uh, rolling stocks, generally speaking. We spoke uh, about uh, shunting activities, but in fact, we have to uh, highlight three different types of shunting activities, which are the light and uh, heavy shunting, uh, the light mainline and distribution, and 
knowledge to, uh, to and at specific location. So there is not one um, scheme for uh, shunting. How now to define uh, the proper uh, shunting locomotives? And you have to take into account uh, several parameters, uh, which are obviously, and the main one, the mission profile, which include uh, a proper understanding of the tasks, the future tasks of the locomotive, but also about the general layout of the track, what is called track profile. Uh, not only this, uh, additional requirements, such as you have to take into account the environment, the cost efficiency, efficiency. You, uh, the target of all, all of you is to reduce, of course, the environmental impact, the noise emission, but also the uh, exhaust emission, low exhaust emission and to ensure uh, the technical suitability uh, for the track uh, in, term, in terms of uh, weight, but also of dimension. And uh, last but, but not least, also compatibility with potential uh, interoperability instruction or norms. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, noise or about um, safety. And, uh, all these things will be uh, taken into account to, proper, uh, to, to define properly the shunting process. So how is it done? Uh, you, we, we saw in the previous slide uh, all the inputs, such as the track profile and the transport tasks. Then we have uh, our own uh, algorithm uh, software, which we, which will analyze completely the shunting process. And what, we, what we, you will get from this, this is not a selection of one shunter. This is a, an optimized shunting process, which include, obviously, shunters, but which will include, as well, uh, cost analysis and operating data. And when I say selection of shunters, it, in, it includes, of course, the type of uh, traction technology. Traction, traction technology, as you might know, uh, there are uh, several systems, including uh, diesel hydraulic. But here, I would like to uh, highlight one of them, which is the diesel electric traction. And from this software, for instance, you will get uh, the, the choice for the proper uh, power, but it might be also uh, a combined system, not only diesel, but also uh, electric. In such a case, this is what you, you, you see with the, um, with the dual mode traction with here with the pantograph, or uh, a new, uh, a new uh, locomotive uh, shunting technology, with, which is the hybrid uh, traction. So with engine combined with uh, batteries and uh, supercaps. Um, these were the main options. But in addition, there is a selection of uh, additional option to further optimize the, the shunting processes. Uh, available from the market, for instance, the EcoDrive system, uh, which uh, is an information control system for uh, reducing the, not only the fuel consumption, but also the wear. As a result, the wear of the, the, the engine. Uh, bypass control also to selectively uh, bypass uh, malfunction to improve the availability of uh, the shunters. And, uh, I will not go into the details, but other options are also available, which are uh, very close to the, one, to, to the option that we can find in the automobile uh, sector. So to conclude, and this is the first conclusion, so don't, don't leave for the coffee uh, on the rolling stock. Um, to conclude, uh, shunting is really a key activity uh, in, in for the prof proper performance of uh, integrated uh, railway. And uh, I want to highlight as well that it cannot be performed properly by a mainline locomotive. 
shunting process is a, a specific process. And as you saw, uh, there are new technologies available on the market which allow to really optimize the selection of shunters, but on, not only of shunters, but more generally speaking of uh, shunting processes. And of course, in that respect, we would be uh, happy to discuss uh, with you on our booth. So it was about the uh, rolling stock optimization. Now uh, I will come to another part of the, the rail, which is the uh, infrastructure. And uh, I will speak about the maintenance. We all know that uh, for maintainers, or generally speaking for operators, they are, uh, uh, it's a huge challenge. Maintenance is a huge challenge, and especially the maintenance of rails. If it is not uh, considered properly, of course, it has some, um, it results uh, to some problem. For instance, uh, the reduction, and this is the obvious one, the, the reduction of the lifetime of the rail, but after it can, would be also the decrease of the comfort for the passenger trains. It can be for the neighborhood also a problem of noise and uh, vibration. And now, even more important, uh, it can be a reduced operation speed in case of a uh, problem uh, with rails. Can be potential damages not only on the rolling stock, but also on the other components of the uh, infrastructure. And it can even bring uh, safety, major safety issues uh, up to the, the, the break of the rail. So now let, let's, uh, let's have a look at the defect uh, on the rails. Uh, we, we all know that there is a general tendency to increase uh, the traffic, the speed, uh, the density, uh, and to reduce, on the other hand, the operating cost. So uh, this has uh, led to a huge increase of uh, defects on the rail. And, uh, uh, there are mainly three categories of defects on rails. Uh, corrugation on the slip waves, okay? rail pollution, and rust. But the most important one is the one in the middle, which is called uh, rolling contact fatigue. And everything starts with um, the hardening of a very thin uh, surface layer on, on the rail. So, how, how it works and what are the stages of development of uh, this defect. Three uh, stages. Everything starts with the fatigue of the fatigue with of the surface layer, okay, with the pre-hardening of the very thin surface layer, which is less than 0.1 millimeter. After it goes to a head shake and in the worst case to a uh, complete uh, rail failure and break of, of the rail. So, uh, if, if you try to see how the, um, the progression of the, uh, of the, of the defect depth uh, with the traffic, you, so, you see that uh, it behaves like this. Without any maintenance, obviously, you will reach uh, very quickly the, rail, the railway uh, limit. Uh, with maintenance, okay, you will save some, some time, but at the end, you will uh, reach the rail wheel limit. So this is with no maintenance, without maintenance, and with corrective maintenance. But we all know that uh, in terms of uh, maintenance, the best is to uh, have preventive maintenance. Huh? So what's happened if we proceed with uh, preventive maintenance? This is the yellow curve and the, the green one here. So you can avoid uh, these uh, major cracks to, to appear. And uh, I want to highlight now one technology, which is the high spin grinding maintenance, the green one for which the, the general philosophy of this grinding is to remove 
this very thin layer I have shown you before during the stages development of the, of the defects. So this is to remove it before. So it's less than 0 0.1 millimeter. So global strategy here is to remove less material in shorter grinding cycle. And uh, technologies are available for both. I'm, I speak obviously of uh, conventional railway, but also uh, of uh, urban transport, as you will see just after. The principle is very easy. I will not go into the details, but it's uh, with uh, grinding stores, uh, grinding stones, sorry, uh, and with a passive rotation of the stones. So it's different from a uh, usual uh, grinding uh, system. And the main benefit compared to the usual grinding system here is that you will not create any uh, corrugation, which is very often the case with uh, conventional grinding. So you don't, don't have any facet. OK, so wh what are the main benefits of, these, uh, of this new technology, the high-speed uh, grinding? Uh, costly maintenance is avoided because you prevent, in fact, major defect uh, from growing, OK, because this is preventive maintenance, and you remove this uh, very thin uh, layer. You can work uh, at uh, very high speed, okay? So you don't need to stop uh, the traffic. You can do it within uh, your traffic or you can do it with, within very uh, short uh, period. And uh, as of today, uh, this is the best way to, to fight against uh, these, these defects. And in addition, it has also other benefits. It would remove what we saw before, the lubricating uh, film that might be on the, on the rail. And it would also remove uh, corrugation and uh, slip waves. Um, so now, in 2013, we, we have a new development, which is the uh, high-speed uh, grinding city. Uh, as you can imagine, a city uh, means that it can be used on uh, urban transport, and we specifically think about uh, metro, but it could be uh, as well on uh, tramway networks. And this technology is no more than the development of uh, uh, our high-speed grinding system already used uh, in several places uh, on conventional network uh, since uh, 2006. The high spin grinding city uh, has been uh, obviously customized for a city operation. For instance, uh, uh, the, uh, the dimension is uh, quite smaller, as you can see uh, uh, on the slide. The, but we have worked also on the noise emission and on the, on the speed. Okay, it, use, it, it, it can work. Uh, at a speed between 25 to 60 kilometers on, uh, on, me on metro uh, network. Okay, and this high spin grinding uh, is uh, easy to, uh, to ship as it can be uh, containerized also, and it's, um, it can be operated as well with very simple system because you can push or, or pull it. Um, other special uh, features that are available for the uh, uh, high-speed grinding city, city, it's a clean technology, okay? It's a quiet technology, and it's a very uh, flexible technology. Uh, this is what I mentioned before. Uh, it can be used as well for a grooved rail for tramway. And uh, this is available from us. Uh, not only for uh, services, and we would be ready to operate services with this, but also to, for selling or for, for leasing. Uh, to conclude, so it was uh, uh, a brief overview of our complete uh, expertise as Voslo, both in rail infrastructure, maintenance, and also transportation with these uh, shunting locomotives. But now uh, we will come you on our booth or uh, to our seminars because uh, in Voslo we have also uh, other business units dealing with uh, switches, uh, 
fastening system, but also a LRT and uh, additional services for um, rails. So you are welcome to, to come and visit us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Frédéric Millier. Do we have any questions? Gentlemen, all the way to, to my right-hand side. Just wanted to make sure you get your cardio exercise this morning. There we go. Um, Dr. Shahid Khan from Saudi Bin Laden Group. Uh, it's very interesting uh, uh, so far as uh, your presentation, especially the part about uh, uh, grinding of, of the rails. And uh, we are interested in that. Uh, first of all, can you tell me how many stones do you use? And uh, this is, you said 25 to 60 kilometers per hour in the metro, but on open line, uh, like for example, uh, you know, if you have a uh, just mill scale removal, what would be the speed that you can use? And uh, please confirm that you said you're also uh, in the market to lease the machine or, you know, send it on hire. Um, the number of stones I mentioned, I think if I remember properly, it was 12, but it was only for the high spin grinding city. Uh, the operating speed in such a case is between 25 and 60, but for the high speed grinding uh, on conventional uh, network, it could be between up to 80, 100 kilometer per hour. And the number of stones in such a case uh, it's roughly 60, something like this. I can give you the, the precise figure let, later on, yeah. Yeah. And th there was a second question. Uh, uh, did you get the number? One six. 16 or 60? 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. Do we have another question from the audience? Gentleman in the front. اليوم عشرة من عشرة بالمشاركة. You know, in uh, the GCC, they have now start looking at you know specifications for the rolling stock, and soon enough they will be doing some procurement. And I've seen in your shunting process, you know, it would have an impact on the efficient operation and even calculation of the rolling stock. What you as a company have been doing in the GCC countries to basically maybe reshape the agenda of the procurement for the rolling stock, taking in mind the shunting process, which is really news to us or to many of us in the GCC countries? Yeah. Um, so I must confess that, uh, unfortunately, uh, shunting activities are sometimes not so well known. And this is why today I wanted to, to make uh, this presentation. Uh, nevertheless, uh, speaking, for instance, of uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, SRO and now SA, because there is an ongoing tender for uh, shunting locomotives, are now uh, really aware of the benefit of getting uh, shunting technologies and to dedicate this kind of work to uh, the proper uh, rolling stock. So uh, we are obviously uh, focusing on, on these, um, these opportunities, yes. <laughs> 